Ciao friends! Beth with Thimblehooks. Thanks for stopping by today. Here's another on my long list of Evie requests. She has her cat ears hat that she loves so much and she has it in several different colors but she wanted a fox. It's been bugging me and I've had this yarn for probably a year. I've had this design but I just haven't shared it with anybody yet. So here's my fox hat. This is Evie's request. Along with that there's a bunny rabbits and something else. I have so many hats that I need to make her that anything with ears apparently she loves it. And she was very pleased now that I have it done. So I'm going to show you how to do this little guy. He doesn't really, it really works up pretty fast. I'm using pretty simple stitches. Just want to make sure that you have a nice straight hook right here that doesn't have a huge grip on it because we're going to need this end in just a second. And a couple of buttons if you wish to put the eyes on. Otherwise, you can go this way. If you don't have any buttons or you don't want to do the extra steps, still looks super cute this way. So either way, it'll be great. I used for this guy buttercream uh, Luxcraft Angel Hair, which is something that they have at, I believe it's just at Joann's. And it's a five bulky, so it's really fuzzy and it's nice and thick and really, really soft. I used that in pumpkin and in white. Right here's white and this is in pumpkin. So that it's a little bit easier to see the stitches. Sometimes it's hard to see things with this fuzzy stuff. So I am going to show you with Red Heart Super Saver. That is not fuzzy. So first of all, this is white and then I have just the bright orange that I'm just going to show you real quick. I hope you're enjoying my video and my channel. If so, please click that button to subscribe. Thanks! So this one is worked in the round, which means we're going to make ourselves a nice big loop. Make a slip knot and I'm using a five millimeter hook. That's what I'm using with my example here and that's also what I use with this yarn, but some yarns are a little bit stretchier than others. So when we get done with this very first step, you want to try it on your head. And if it's not the right size, you can go up a half size or down a half size to make it just right. But what we're going to do is let's go out and chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right around seven. And then I pull this part through, but not all the way through, and take our bottom end and put it through our very first chain. Then we will not have a twist because we're going to make this into a big loop. So we were at seven. Now we want to just hold this and continue chaining. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. When you get to about twelve, you'll just be able to hold this and just keep right on going. Go all the way out to sixty and I'll meet you right back here when we have a nice big long chain of 60. All right, here's my big loop of 60. I'm all ready to 60. And I marked my first loop and my last loop just so I can show you what I am doing right here. There is no twist in my chain because I, that's what I use this end for. That's why we needed one that didn't have a big grip so our loop could go right over it. So now what we want to do, we have 60. We have two loops on our hook. There's our original one, very first chain, and then one that we just made. So I want to take this loop and pull it through the other loop, like that. Boom. And chain one. So we're ready for our next round. Easy peasy so far, right? Now we just got a big, big loop. This is what you want to probably try on. And if it's a little bit too small or too snug with the particular yarn that you're using, Go up to a five and a half and it probably will take care of it. Go to five and a half hook. So now what we're going to do, we did our chain one. I am going to go into my very first chain. That, see it's marked here with the pink. My very first chain and do a double crochet. And now I like to mark my first stitches because you guys know I love my stitch markers. And we are going to put one double crochet in every chain all the way around. So you will have 60 double crochets. So I'll meet you back over here when you have 60 double crochets, one in each 
chain. And here is my last double crochet, number 60. So there we go. We have ourselves a little ring. Nice little ring. It's flat. It does not twist. Perfect. But in order to finish this round, because right now these aren't connected, we go into that marked stitch. This is why I use my markers. I love them. It saves me time. Just grab your yarn and slip stitch. Please remember that it really helps my channel when you watch the video all the way to the end. Now we're ready for our next round. Our next round is chain one and in the same marked stitch we want to work a front post double crochet which means we're going to start in this marked stitch and we're going to go behind the post and then again right there. We're totally behind this post right here not in the top V's where you usually work but we're down here. Now you could just complete a normal double crochet. Yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. There! And we're making the ribbing right here. So in the next stitch, yarn over again, but now we're going to do a back post double crochet, which is the opposite of what we just did. So instead of going like this, we're coming in from the back and going over the top of the next post and completing our double crochet. And you just keep that sequence going all the way around. There's a front post and a back post. All the way around. And we're going to end up with a nice little ribbing. So we're make, working on the bottom white part right now. And I'll meet you after you do alternating front post and back post, double crochets all the way around. Meet you back here. And here's my last one. I'm going around this post, the very last post, and that is a back post double crochet. There's my last one. So that was our first round of the ribbing. Start it out with a round of double crochets so you have a base to start your ribbing. So now we want to do this three more times for a total of four rounds. So first we want to slip stitch into our mark stitch, chain one, and underneath do exactly the same thing we did before, a front post double crochet. And now I will take my stitch marker and mark that first stitch. And the next spot is right there, back post. Double crochet. Right in this little gap right here, go under, front post double crochet, and again in the back, you'll see this little gap, that's where you want to be working. Do that all the way around for a total of four, four high. So this is one, we did already. This is our second row, so we want to do rows two, three, and four. We want four total. So I will meet you when I'm all done with my ribbing. And here will be my last, here's my last one. One more back post double crochet to complete our ribbing. Go into the mark stitch with the slip stitch and you can fasten off your white. Let's fasten off our white. And now you can see we're totally in the round. We're just going to get to keep working around and around and around. So we finished off our white. We're just going to tuck that away for right now. Now if you want to make the nose, if you want to have him look just like this, they have this little remnant of black, Red Heart Super Saver, and this is most definitely enough to do this little nose. So I will show you this one too. Very, very quick, very, very easy. So we want to make a magic circle, which is wrap your fingers, make an X here, turn, you have two loops, go under the first and grab the back, twist towards you, 
grab and pull through. Now we have a magic circle or a magic ring. In our magic ring, right now I want to do 10 single crochets. So there's my first one and especially when I'm working with black and I know it doesn't show up very well. Sorry, but his nose is black. It's harder to work with black. So I mark, definitely mark my stitch there. But I want 10 single crochets in my magic circle. So here we go. There's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Now we can pull our magic circle closed. That's why, this is the magic part. You can pull it closed so you don't have much of a gap in the middle. And now we're going to increase one more time around to make his nose a little bit bigger. So you go into the mark stitch and do a single crochet and an increase which is another single crochet in that same stitch. Then I'm going to take out my marker and mark the one that was the first stitch, which at this point I just did two. So it's this guy right here. I'm going to do that all the way around so you'll end up with 20 stitches for this round. So again, single crochet and another one in the same stitch. Two single crochets in each stitch all the way around. I'll meet you back at my stitch marker in seconds. And here's my last stitch. Also gets two single crochets and then we just want to slip stitch to finish that off to complete our circle, complete that second round, and then you can fasten off your black. See, I told you I had plenty of black. And now I can take out my marker. So now we just have ourselves a cute little circle, which is right here. Cute little circle. And again, if you don't want this part, just skip it. So I'm just going to grab my orange now and I will show you how you make the top of his nose. Just pick a spot anywhere you want, it does not matter, and go into your stitch, fasten on your new color, and we want to single crochet in five stitches. There's two, three, four, and five. I think this orange will show up very, yes, this orange shows up very nicely. Awesome. You can't really see it as much here at all. That's why I'm using the red heart so it's a little bit easier to see my stitches because this fuzzy stuff really blends in your stitches together. So what we're going to do is another row of that. Chain one, turn our work, and single crochet in all five of the previous row. chain one, turn our work, single crochet again all the way across until you're at the height that you want. All the way across. Let's just see. Until you're at the height that you want. We're right here. So I think I can even stop now. So this one is a little bit taller just because this is stretchier yarn. So I made this one a little bit taller too because it's stretchier yarn that matches. This one is not as stretchy. It's stretchy this way, but it's not stretchy this way. So I think I can stop there. I believe on this one I did four. So now you can just finish this off too. All right, so there's his nose. So nose is done, hooray! Now what we want to do and we want to start on our orange, which is right up here. So what we are going to do is get our orange back out again, because we just used a smidge. We're going to use a little bit more now, a lot, more, a lot a bit more, and start in our marked stitch and fasten on our yarn. So I'll explain this really quick before we get into my stitches so it doesn't get confusing. But right over here is right here. 
I'm, I just like to leave my starting point on the side just in case there is anything noticeable. If there's any kind of a slip stitch that shows or anything, I always like to leave those right on the side because it's not going to show very much at all. But if you have any kind of concern about that, it won't show much. So we start here. We want his nose to be in the middle of his face. So, in order to do that with our 60 stitches, the front technically, right here, the front would be 30 stitches and the back would be 30 stitches. So we want the nose right in the middle, which would be 15, would be in the center. So we're going to use stitches number 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 to attach our little nose. In the same stitch that we had marked and we just attached our yarn, we want to do double crochet. And now you can move your stitch marker up to the orange because we're done with the white. So that was one, and in every stitch, double crochets. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten, eleven, and twelve. And now remember I said 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Right, so we're going to attach because we're on stitch number 13. We want to continue on with our double crochet, so yarn over and then go through the orange and the next white and complete your double crochet. And do that for the other four stitches on his nose. Number two, yarn over, go through orange and white. Here's number three, through orange and white. There's number four, and yarn over, go through number or the orange and through the white and the orange. Boom! Now his nose is connected. <gasps> Easy peasy. So he's connected right away. And now we just want to continue with double crochet all the way around. Right, so here we are, we are back and I decided I was going to show you this one because it's almost done. His nose is already connected right here. This one is almost done and I wanted to finish it so I'm going to show you with the fuzzy yarn for reels. So we did our eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rounds of double crochets in the orange. Our row nine of our orange here is specific. Very specific because we're going to make ears and a head. And it might look scary, but it's not. It's really, really easy. Get yourself some stitch markers or some way to identify these stitches. So there's our first nine right here from this stitch marker to this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those are double crochets. Nine double crochet. And then we do 12 single crochets to right here. And then here is nine double crochets. And on the back it'll mirror exactly the same thing. Nine double crochets, 12 single crochets, and nine double crochets. So having these, not necessary, don't have to have it, but boy it sure makes everything a lot easier, especially when you're working with fuzzy yarn so you don't miss a stitch and come up at the very end and go, oh no, I lost, I dropped a stitch somewhere. So this is going to keep you from having to redo this. This part is a little tricky, but it really isn't that hard. So we're going to turn this inside out. I'm going to grab my yarn and turn this little hat inside out. And we want to get back to our starting spot. So now he's inside out. All of our stitch markers showing. Make sure you flip them up so you can see where they are. Because there is a reason for these to be here. And it really does help. So what we want to do is go through our very first orange stitch that's marked here with pink. And 
through the one on the back side that's marked with pink. Pull through and you can either single crochet or a slip stitch, whichever is easier. It's a little easier to single crochet with this fuzzy stuff. So there's that. Now we go over to the next one, the next stitch, next orange stitch, and do the exact same thing through both sides. And we'll do that for these first nine. So there's number three, number four, number five, Six, seven, eight, and nine. There. Now we took care of all these first ones that were marked from the pink ones to the blue ones. Now everything in between here, between the blue and this other shade of pink, we are going to do a 12 single crochets together. So that is, go into the next stitch that's not marked with blue, right here, and through the other side, the one right next to the blue one. So we'll go through both halves again and pull through and pull up a loop. Do not finish this stitch. I'm going to continue doing the exact same thing again through both sides and pull up a loop. And do that all the way across for all 12 of these. You can end up with a lot of loops on your hook. This is probably the trickiest part of the whole hat. So if you manage to, if you get this one down, you're golden. Now remember the pink ones we marked off were part of our ear over here. So we got to the one right next to the pink, they were done. So now we have all these loops on our hook. Do not drop any of these loops. Yarn over and pull through all of them, every one of them. Get that nice and tight and chain one to close. There's chain one to close our 12 single crochets together. Now we're over here to these other markers which is exactly the same as this side because it's another ear. So we're going to go through the one that's marked pink and the other one that's marked pink you do whatever you did on the other side. If you did single crochets, like I did, I'm going to do a single crochet. If you did slip stitches, do slip stitches. And do that again for all nine of these. Seven, and eight, and you will figure out exactly why I had these two marked next to each other, as by the time it gets down to this very last set of two stitches, these get, can get very easily get lost and get pulled together. So now you know where the last two stitches are. Go through the first green one and through the second green one. Do your slip stitch or your single crochet, whichever one was your preference for all of the other ear stitches. And I did single crochets. Boom. Finish that orange off. Finish off with my orange. So now he's inside out. Pull him right side out. Puff up your ears, get your little points out, and see it makes pointy ears and a pointy head, and as simple as that. Now you just have to weave in some ends and connect the nose. You can connect his nose any way you want to. Bring it to a place where you think it looks good, where you want it to be, and also you want to pull in, 
pull through this orange, this little tail. Just pull him through all the way to the inside. That'll work just fine. He's right in here. So I pulled the orange through and I pulled the black through. And now you can just use a needle or your hooks. Like you can go like this. And just kind of pull it through. To a place where you can make a knot. And see, I just pulled all those through a little bit. Make sure they're nice and tight on the front. You really can secure that any way you want to, but I'm just going to tie a little knot. And then I also do the orange. So he's in the knot too just to keep them out of sight. And I have ends here, ends here, ends here, ends here. Just weave all your ends in. So if you're at the point of making this hat, I bet you know how to weave in your ends. And then the last part is two little eyes. If you wanted to have eyes, I think it looks actually looks really cute like this, as is, because you can still tell what it is. So even if you thought the nose was cute and you found out you didn't have any buttons, you're golden. He's cute. He's cute this way, he's cute this way, and he's cute this way. So it does not matter. So if you wanted to, you pick a spot for eyes. You put them really close together. You could have really big buttons and put them out here. You had really, really big buttons. I think that would be cute. Maybe you wanted tiny buttons, so I gave her tiny buttons. But if you had bigger buttons right here, I think this would be adorable with his little face like that. So you pick where you want the buttons. So thanks for stopping by. Thank you for supporting my small business. Please subscribe to Thimblehooks and stop back really soon. I have a lot of really fun stuff coming up. A lot more Eevee requests. So I think I have a couple more hats coming your way. So thanks. Bye.